Hey everybody, so today I just wanted to walk through how you can work with OPC in LabVIEW. So for those of you who may not know what OPC or OPC UA is, this is essentially a standard way to communicate across different devices. So um, there's a foundation that basically decided on a format um, and this, is, this can be used by all sorts of different uh, devices. So like a lot of PLCs, for example, are OPC compliant, meaning that they would support this format. Um, and this could be PLCs from all sorts of different vendors. Um, works on like IoT devices, um, a whole bunch of different hardware, even some like databases and different uh, services will use it OPC. Um, so LabVIEW does have the ability to act as both an OPC server and an OPC client. Um, so it can, you know, be the dedicated listener or you know have something accessing either reading or writing data um, and I've kind of put together just some simple examples of how to do this um, in LabVIEW um, just kind of showing some of the features um, and then just as a side note this does require that you install the OPC UA toolkit um, for these to show up in your palette um, so for our server um, it's a really simple server application so we have this uh, OPC UA server create. Um, and so this has a whole bunch of different options for it. Um, we'll walk through some of these. So um, first off, an OPC UA server name. So I just named it OPC UA server. It could be whatever you want to name it. Uh, the TCP port you're listening on. So in my case, I just picked uh, 49580. Um, you have a supported security policies, um, so you can either have no security policies, sign with basic um, 128 RSA 15, sign and encrypt, sign with basic, and sign and encrypt. So depending on uh, your security configuration, um, you may select different things. Um, and also depending on the device you're talking with. For example, if the device you're working with doesn't support any sort of security or encryption or anything like that, then you have no choice to, to not do that, obviously. Um, but if you are able, obviously the more secure, the better, um, depending on the data that you're transmitting. Um, so just have some things configured. Um, you are able to pass in a server certificate file if you are using encryption and signing. Um, and uh, one kind of side note, if you go into the OPC UA, there is this function um, called um, uh, create certificate. Um, and so this just allows you to pick a name for a certificate and it generates the certificate files for you. So um, you don't necessarily have to get those from like a certificate authority through your IT team or whatnot. Um, and yeah, so there's also this uh, trust all clients. Um, so uh, we've, we're just leaving it at false for now. Um, so this is gonna output a server endpoint, which is basically the endpoint that the clients need to use to connect to this. Um, next, we have this clear all trusted clients. So we're just clearing out, you know, anything that's marked as trusted at the moment. Um, we, we're adding trusted uh, clients so if I am using a security um, then I can pass in basically certificates that the client that what I know is to be trusted you know um, but in this instance everything's unencrypted I'm not using any certificates at all so it doesn't really matter but just there to kind of show that you can use that to say hey these are the certificates you know if a client tries to connect with these certificates then accept them and um, there's this uh, add folder function. So um, one of the cool things about OPC is you can basically create a foldered structure. So you're going to have basically nodes and in those nodes you can have folders and those folders can have subfolders and you know on and on and on levels deep and then you can have basically data stored in those locations. So I can um, create on a single server I can create multiple folders so that my data is all really well organized um, and even in those folders I can create subfolders that organize data differently so really kind of cool how you can structure that so in this case we're just creating a folder called test data um, there is this parent folder node ID that I left unwired 
meaning that it's just going to put it under the main node. Um, but if I wanted to put that underneath something else, I could. And there is an optional description as well. I kind of, for, you know, I'm going to forego that. Um, now I'm going to create an item in that folder. Um, so in my test data folder, I'm creating um, this item called random data. I can define the type of that data um, and what kind of access I want to allow. So whether I want it to be a read-only item, a write-only item, or allow reads and writes. Um, there also is this description field, so I can add a description that clients can query. Um, another really cool thing about OPC UA is it allows for storing historical data, which is really, really cool. Um, so there's this historical access option. Um, you can either enable or disable. So if you disable this, if someone goes to read that data, they only get the current value of that data. Um, but if I allow historical access, I can basically store a buffer of that data. So in this instance, the queue size I've set is 1,000. So this is going to hold the last 1,000 values for this item in memory. Um, so that you know, I can either read hey, the current value of this item or I can read the last thousand um, and basically keeps like a circular buffer of that data. So really, really cool. And I can specify what I want that size to be. Um, and this is going to output an item node, which would be how you connect to this item specifically. Um, then I'm just going to start my server. Um, this actually, now it will start doing things so that it can respond to um, reads and writes and whatnot. Um, and um, there are these events you can use as well. In this case, it's a simple example. I'm not messing with that. This is just running over and over again until I tell it to stop. And once it stops, we just have this stop function and a close function. So that's kind of it on the server side. Um, I've created a writer, um, and this is pretty simple. So we're just going to connect to our, pull this up, our, OPC UA client connect. Um, so we're going to connect to this location. So you're going to use this format of opc.tcp um, colon um, slash slash your IP or um, URL, DNS name, whatever it is, however you're finding the device, and then another colon and then the port you're connecting to. Um, and then we've also got a security policy so I can determine um, how I'm connecting. Um, I'm using no security. Um, so I just need to make sure that this matches whatever server or device it is that you're trying to connect to, has to be supported. I can pass in a certificate file and server certificates if I am wanting to use security. I also can use uh, credentials if I need to actually like sign into the device. I can pass in like a username and password. Um, but for my instance, I'm not worried about that. This is totally unlocked. Um, so yeah. Then we're going to uh, basically just in this loop write data over and over again. So we're just going to um, use this write function. Um, there's a whole bunch of different data types supported. So you don't have to necessarily do formatting to strings and whatnot to send data over the network. I can basically just specify what that data type is. And this is all polymorphic, so it adapts really nicely. Um, so here we're just generating a random number. We're generating a timestamp, and then we're specifying the node ID that we want to write to. Um, and yeah, that the node status is good. And then we're basically just bundling all of that together. And then it wants this in an array. Um, so we're writing single point data. You also could be generating arrays of data and writing arrays at a time. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. And then once we click stop, it's going to stop. So that is our writer. Um, now, I also set up a client reader just to show. And a single client can do both writes and reads. I just kind of broke them up for simplicity's sake. Um, but um, yeah, so we're going to do, we have the same thing, this OPC connect um, to connect to our uh, um, server. Um, I'm also using this forward browse, which is returning um, this browse result, which is essentially a 
list of um, information, like uh, available items and folders um, for this server, which is kind of cool. It can kind of query that and find that stuff automatically. Um, then I'm, all, I'm doing the forward browse again. Um, so this first one had nothing connected. Now I'm actually passing in the data that I'm interested in, this node ID, and it's gonna return the results for that node ID specifically. So this is just information about the root node, and this is gonna be about my specific node. Um, don't have to do that, just showing what you can read back. Um, then in here, we are going to be doing a read. Um, so multiple read, we're passing in you know, the nodes we wanna read. Um, in this case, it's one, it does not have to be. Um, and you can read that data right back out in the data type you want. I also just wanted to show, so I'm reading this as a variant. Obviously, we're writing it as a double, but I just wanted to show I can read this as a variant and then convert it to a double. So you can work with all sorts of different um, data types and conversions and whatnot. And it kind of manages that for you, which is cool. Um, and then we're just going to be reading this data over and over again and until we click stop. Once we click stop, um, we're going to do this history data multiple read, which is basically going to read the historical data on this node right here. Um, so rather, this is just going to be reading the current value of our item. This is going to return the historical data, which is kind of cool. Um, so I can get more than just the current value. Um, and there's this request field here, which I am just saying, um, let's read, oops, sorry, let me scoot that down. Yeah, so we're just saying, hey, let's read, you know, from uh, in between this time. So yeah, we're just looking at what's right now, minus 300. Um, so, and then closing that connection after the fact. Um, so let's start our OPC server. So you can see um, it, we get our endpoint for the server and our endpoint for the node. Um, let's start our writer. So it's writing data to the server. Um, and you can see those numbers changing. Now let's start our reader. Um, so we can see that we're successfully reading that item back. Um, we can see the num numeric value updating. We can also see the timestamp updating. Um, down here, um, you can also see, so when we were reading the root node, we basically got this, uh, the actual server type, but then it also returned this um, folder which is my test data folder. Um, and then when I looked into that node specifically, it returned um, the node ID there, the name of that data, and a little bit of information about it. So if I don't even know what data is available, I can actually query my server and find what data is available, which is cool. Um, so let's stop this. And you can see now we've got our historical data. So. As I go through here, we can see the different values and the timestamps. So just reading that historical data, which is cool. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for um, working with OPC in LabVIEW. Um, let's just take one last really quick look at the OPC functions in the palette. Um, so you do have OPC UA client and OPC UA server. So for a server, um, we walk through some of these. There's obviously more, so you can, you know, define you know properties, you know, register a server, um, read and write from the server, which I didn't do in this case. Um, you can do things like trigger alarms and off of like, hey, if a value is ever true, you know, do this or if you know stuff like that. Um, and I can allow historical access on the server side. OPC UA client, um, we use some of these. Um, so we connected forward browse. We also have these uh, create subscriptions, um, which basically allows you to register for events based off of those items, um, which is kind of cool. Um, I can get attributes, etc. access historical data, 
and also handle alarms and events on the client side. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Really cool way to connect to all sorts of different stuff in LabVIEW. Um, but yeah, thanks for tuning in. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.